Hey everybody, Dr. Shake here with another video from The Dentalist. Last time we talked about strain, its types, the relationship between stress and strain, and further details related to it. If you haven't watched it yet, go ahead and watch it first before you start this video so you can better understand what's going on in this one. I hope you remember us discussing about the stress-strain relationship by the help of a graph. Let's go back to that graph again. Now, I'm assuming you would know about the proportional limit, point E, point T, and the details related to these as we went through this extensively in the last video. Now, I want you to notice that there is a slope after the straight line portion in the stress strain graph. This slope gives us a measure of modulus of elasticity. The modulus of elasticity is given as stress over strain. Now, modulus of elasticity has the unit of stress, which is what? If you've watched my last videos in the series, you would know that it's Newton per meter square. Or, to shorten it, you can also interpret Newton per meter square as Pascal. So, modulus of elasticity has a unit of stress, which is Pascal. Now, the irony with modulus of elasticity is that it rather tells us about the degree of rigidity of the material. And of course, indirectly the elasticity. The higher the modulus of elasticity, the more rigid a material is. This is shown by a more steeper slope in the graph. The lower the modulus of elasticity, the less rigid and more flexible a material is. This is shown by a more shallow slope in the graph. Clinically, it is very important for an impression material to be flexible and have less modulus of elasticity to function adequately. At the same time, it is important for a restorative material to be rigid and have higher modulus of elasticity. If we look at the equation of the modulus of elasticity, it is clear that it is inversely proportional to strain. And we should understand that the more strain a material can bear, the more flexible it is and the less will be its modulus of elasticity. Now, if you don't remember what yield stress or point E is, let me remind you that is the point beyond which the strain is not fully recoverable. Therefore, the strain between point E and point T marks the degree of permanent deformation, which can be imported on the material up to its fracture point. Now right here, I would like to give you the concept of ductility and malleability. When the material undergoes tensile stress beyond point E up to point T, it can be stretched and bent to a considerable amount without being fractured. When the material undergoes compressive stress beyond point E up to point T, it can be hammered into a thin sheet to a considerable amount without being fractured up to point, point T. Okay? Alloys used to form wires show a high degree of ductility as it is extended considerably during the production process. In addition, clasps of denture constructed from the ductile alloys can be altered by bending. An example of malleability is when stainless steel is hammered into thin sheets to form denture base. Therefore, depending on the modulus of elasticity of a material, the material can withstand these forces by responding in different ways. We'll discuss two more things and then we'll end this video here. I want you to quickly notice the area beneath the stress strain curve. The area beneath the curve up to the elastic limit is called resilience. It is the energy absorbed by the material while undergoing elastic deformation up to the elastic limit. This energy is then released when the material springs back to its original shape after removal of applied stress. A high value of resilience is one parameter often used to characterize elastomers. 
Materials having a high resilience value may be used as a cushioned lining to a hard denture base since they would be able to absorb considerable amount of energy without being distorted. Other than resilience, another phenomenon that I would like you to take from this stress strain graph is toughness, which is marked by the total area under this graph. This again has unit of energy and is defined as the total amount of energy which a material can absorb to the point of fracture. A material capable of absorbing large amount of energy up to its fracture point regardless of retaining its shape is termed as a tough material and the opposite of toughness is brittleness which is given to a material that cannot absorb large amounts of energy and fractures too soon my friends we will end our video here I'm hoping that everything we talked about is clear to you Let's quickly check what we did today. We went through modulus of elasticity, ductility, malleability, resilience, toughness, and brittleness. In the next video, we will further talk about the physical properties of dental materials. Let's just quickly finish the physical properties so we can take a look at other properties that help us characterize the dental materials. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and share it. Also make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can keep a track of our postings in the future. That's all for today. This is Dr. Sheikh saying goodbye to you. Take care till we meet again.